Welcome scholars, Mr. Byers here. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Today we're going to learn a little bit about applying polynomial operations. I've got a couple specific examples that I think are going to really focus in on two of the most common types of problems you guys might see. Um, so let's get things started. Let's go ahead and um, consider Mr. Byers' non-existent yard. <laughs> we got to assume it exists. Well, I don't have a yard. And uh, we got to assume that it's a rectangle. Now, if I had a yard and if it existed and if it were a rectangle, determine how much fence I would need to buy in terms of X. Now, I've given you a rectangle over here. This is, uh, this is the yard. Let's go ahead and call it as such. This is the yard. And in order to figure out how much fence I need, I need to talk about what's going on around the edges here. I need one edge there, I need one edge here, and I need one edge there, and I need the top bit as well. I need to go all the way around. I need to figure out how much fence I would need to go all the way around. So functionally, um, I need to look at this in terms of four pieces. I got two pieces that look like this, the two sides, it's a rectangle, and the top and the bottom. Now if it's a rectangle, that tells me a little bit more information. That tells me that this side must be the same as this side. So this side is also x squared minus nine. Uh, not sure what's going on with that pen. We'll get a different one. Let's see here, x squared minus nine. So additionally, same thing with the top and the bottom. If the bottom is this, the top has to be the same. Two x squared plus four x plus four. Now, a couple ways we could do this problem. We can talk about this in terms of just adding all the bits together, and we could do that. That'd be just fine. Or we can take the two bits we started with and just multiplying each of them by two and add it together. I'm gonna go with the second option. Um, so I'm gonna take these two bits right here and multiply them by two. Let's see if we get this straight. There we go. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna say, I need to do two of my links plus two of my widths, and that's going to be my perimeter, okay? Perimeter, as in P, okay? So, let's go two of my lengths. I'm gonna call that uh, x squared minus nine. And then two of my widths, I'm gonna call that my two x squared plus four x plus four. All right, sounds good. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna distribute everything with the two doubled all of it okay I doubled all of it so I'm gonna get 2x squared minus 2 times 9 or 18 I'm gonna add 2 uh, times 2x squared which is gonna actually gonna give me 4x squared I'm gonna get 2 times 4x which is going to be 8x and then two times four, which is going to be plus eight. And now I'm looking at some like terms, so I need to combine them all together. All right, so let's look at this in terms of, I got some squared terms right here and right there. I got some linear terms with just the X's. I got that one. And I have some uh, constants with just the numbers here and here. So I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna say two x squared plus four x. Those are like terms, they both have x squared. So I'm gonna combine them. So it's gonna be two plus four or six x squared. Then I'm gonna say, okay, let's do my linear terms with just the x's. I'm gonna say plus x, not squared, just the x. And then I am going to take my negative 18 and add eight to it. That's gonna give me minus 10. My final answer is going to be whatever this is in feet, okay? So in terms of x, I have determined that my answer will be six x squared plus eight x minus 10 feet with whatever x is, okay? That's one of our more common applications. All I had to do was add up all the sides. If it asks you how much, how much you need, um, it's generally going to be asking you to go either all the way around the shape with a perimeter or like the next problem. It could be asking you 
the area. Okay. Now, how much grass seed would he need to cover his yard? If you go to the hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, and you buy some grass seed, it's going to be tell you exactly how much yard it will cover, and it will tell you in terms of square feet, square yards, something like that. Okay, square meters for most of the world. Uh, U.S. is special, but for the most part, it's going to give it to you how much seed that bag will cover in terms of square feet. Okay, so I need to look at my problem down here so I need to take these two things I need to take this side and multiply it by this side because the area um, scoot it over just a little bit there we go so the area is going to be length times width okay and in this case that means I'm gonna take my this side here, x squared minus 9, and multiply it by my other side, 2x squared plus 4x plus 4. And if it's feet times feet, that's going to give me, what, feet squared. So I took this side, multiplied it by this side, and that's going to give me feet squared. So. As I dive into this, let's just go ahead and say I'm going to set up a box. Um, I'm going to have two terms here and three terms there. That means I need a two by three box. Right, this is the box method. It is the exact same thing as distribution. Either is fine. I personally like this method because it's really hard to figure, mess up what you're supposed to be multiplying. So on this side, my side with two terms, I'm going to put my x squared and my minus 9. My side with the three terms up here, I'm going to go 2x squared plus 4x plus 4. All right, so I'm going to multiply my rows and columns together. I'm going to get x squared times 2x squared. I'm going to get negative 9 times 2x squared. I'm going to get x squared times 4x, and I'm going to get negative 9 times 4x. I'm going to get x squared times 4, and I'm going to get negative 9 times 4. Now, I take all these pieces and I add them together. This is going to give me uh, x squared times x squared will be x to the fourth. Uh, I can just leave the 2 out in front. I don't have to worry about that. Then I've got 4x times x cubed. That's going to give me 4 because there aren't any other coefficients. And then I add the powers. x squared times x is the same thing as x times x times x. Okay, So that's 3x's. That's to the third power. Over here, we've got x squared times 4. That's just going to become a coefficient, 4x squared. Over here, we have negative 9 times 2x squared. That's going to be minus 18x squared. That's going to be negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. Let me just have an x squared. Same thing over here. Negative 9 times 4, that's going to give me minus 36x's. And then I have minus 9 times 4, which is going to give me minus 36. Put it all together, what do we get? Hmm, what do we get? Hmm. Now, notice um, what happened here. I don't have my like terms on diag diagonals. That's kind of weird. Um, it would have been, and we could have absolutely set it up so that my, all my like terms would have been on diagonals. That would have required us to add a 0x term on this side. So that we would have a 3x3 three three where I would have had a diagonal of zeros. We could have done that, okay? But we did not. So let's just find our like terms. So I have 2x to the fourth power. That's the only fourth power. Do I have any third powers? I do. I have 4x to the third power. Do I have any second powers? I do. I have negative 18x squared and 4x. I'm going to add those two together. Negative 18 plus 4 is minus 14x squared. All right, do I have any x's? Just x's. I do, just the one minus 36x, and then I have a constant out at the end, minus 36, that is it. So all of this would be in terms of feet, 
squared. And uh, yeah, so basically, two formulas need to remember. Perimeter, perimeter is just the adding up all the sides of the shape. Area, uh, for a rectangle, it's just multiplying length times width. There's some other areas we'll eventually need to know, but that's the one that we're going to be concerned about this week. Okay. Um, so with that said, I hope everyone has a great day. Yeah. Peace out, scholars. Have a great day.